All right. Hello, everyone. We are looking at chapter five now, which is probability. This section is 5.1 on randomness, probability, and simulations. So only two learning targets today. So first, you should be able to interpret probability as a long-term, long-run relative frequency and use simulation to model chance behavior. So the idea of probability, a random process generates outcomes that are determined purely by chance and a trial is one repetition of a random process. So a very easy way to think about it is let's flip a coin, all right? The, the random process is you continuously keep flipping a coin um, because it is purely by chance. Is it going to land heads or tails? There's nothing I can do um, to really change it. Is it chance 50-50? Is it going to be heads? Is it going to be tails? All right. A trial now is one repet repetition of that random process. So I'm flipping the coin right now. That one trial, that one flip is the trial. The random process is like flipping a coin. All right. Now, what we're going to look at here is a graph trying to I hint at this idea of called of the law of large numbers. And it basically goes about this idea of how many tosses we do, right? So if I flip a coin, okay, so the x axis is the number of tosses. The y-axis is a pr proportion of heads, okay? So I flip a coin. The very first time I flip it, it lands heads, so I have 100% heads. Now I flip the coin again. I get tails, so now I'm one for two for heads or 50%, so I drop down to 50%. I flip the coin again, and I land heads, so now I'm two out of three heads, so that brings me up to 66%. I flip the coin again, it's tails, I drop down to 50% again. Then I flip the coin again, and I get tails. So now I'm still only two for five or 40%. Then I flip the coin again, and I am at, I get heads, so I go back up. I'm at five for, or sorry, three for six. And then I keep doing this process, right? So um, if I do this only 10 times, right? It's not, we can't really tell exactly where this is going to go because it just keeps depending on what those heads and tails are, right? But if I kept doing this a lot of times, like a hundred times or a thousand times, we're going to expect that number, the proportion to be heads, to fall really close to 50%. All right. So that's what we're illustrating here. In the first 10 tosses, right, I jump from 100% of heads to 50%, to 66, to 50, to 40%, to 50, and I keep bouncing back and forth. But if I do this a lot of times, if I do this 500 times, although at the beginning I might jump back and forth and I might take a really big dive, right? I am going to fall back close to that line of what the probability is, which is 50%. So that's what essentially probability is. The probability of an outcome of a chance process is a number between 0 and 1. It's always between 0 and 1. 0 meaning that it never happens. 1 meaning that it um, it certainly will happen, or it will guarantee to happen. That describes the proportion of times the outcome would occur in a very long series of repetitions. So, the probability of getting a flipping a coin once um, out, out of 10 times can't really, it could be around 50%, but we don't really know exactly. But if I do this process 500 times, if I flip that coin, it's going to fall really, really, really close to 50%, which is what that probability is of flipping a coin. Of flipping a coin is 50%. And that comes from if I did it a ton, a bunch of times, it will actually fall very close to that 500. Right. So, like we said, probability is when you do this random process a lot of times, it's what that number approaches. Okay. So, here's a note. Some people distinguish between tossing a coin several times to estimate the probability of a head and using a computer applet to simulate the random process. So it would take a lot of work for you to personally flip a coin 500 times and then record the results. So you could use computer programming to do or simulate that random process. Now, understanding randomness. So the idea of probability is that randomness is predictable in the long run. And so, unfortunately, our intuition about chance behavior tries to tell us that randomness should be predictable in the short run. What this means is that like, if I flip a coin and I get heads, and I flip a coin, 
and ask you, hey, what do you think it's going to be? A lot of you are going to tell me it should probably be tails, right? Because if I had heads, I need to get back to tails, right? 50-50. That's not exactly the case. In the long run, the probability is 50%. But in the short term, anything can happen, right? Anything can happen on this coin flip, right? I could get a heads and then flip it again and get another heads and flip it again and get another heads and so forth, right? But in the long run, I would expect if I get a bunch of heads at the beginning, eventually it's going to even out and I'm going to get a bunch of tails. So I fall back to that probability, which is 50%. All right. So in the short term, kind of anything can happen. But in the long term, we allow randomness to happen and predict that long term probability. And this is kind of what I was just alluding to. Some people use the phrase law of averages to refer to the misguided belief that the results of a chance process have to even out in the short term. They don't have to in the short term, right? If I flip a coin five times, then there's a chance that I get all five heads, right? But if I do this a hundred times, I'm going to start to fall towards that, that probability because I've done it a lot, okay? But in the short term, kind of anything can happen. But in the long term, our probabilities fall to what that probability should be. So now a simulation. So we've talked about this a little bit in chapter four, but a simulation is the imitation of chance behavior based on a model that accurately reflects the situation. So instead of you personally flipping a coin 500 times, you can do a simulation to kind of show the same process. So when you're simulating a process, you want to describe how to use a chance device to imitate one trial or one repetition of the simulation and tell us what you will record at each trial. So if I'm flipping this coin, how I do this is I'm going to take a random number generator of one to two. I'm going to assign one as heads, two as tails. I run the random number generator. If I show up one, I count that as a head. If I if a two shows up, I count it as a tail. All right? That's one trial. And that's how I record it. One or two is heads or tails. Okay. Then I'm just going to perform a lot of trials of this, which is a simulation. I'm going to simulate this a bunch of times. So these random trials happen and happen and happen. I keep pressing enter to get that random number generator, recording my um, result each time. And then I would use my result to then answer the question of interest. So maybe I do this 100 times and I got 52 heads and 48 tails at the end of it all. All right. So we'll go through another process of simulation. In an attempt to increase sales, a breakfast cereal company decides to offer a NASCAR promotion. Each box of cereal will consist a collectible card featuring one of the following NASCAR drivers. Um, Joey Larango, Kevin Hendrick, Chase Elliott, Danica Patrick, and Jimmy Johnson. The company claims that each of the five cards is equally likely to appear in any box of cereal. A NASCAR fan decides to keep buying boxes of cereal until she has all five cards. She is surprised when it takes her 23 boxes to get the full set of cards. Does this outcome provide convincing evidence that the 25 cards are not equally likely. To help answer this question, we want to perform a simulation to estimate the probability that it will take 23 or more boxes to get a full set of NASCAR collectible cards. So describe how to use a random number generator to perform one trial of the simulation. So there's five people. We're going to assign the numbers to each one of the people. So five numbers, let one be Joey, two be Kevin, three be Chase, four be Danny Patrick, and five be Jimmy. Okay. And then you're going to use a random number generator from one to five, which is like simulating buying that box of cereal. So I randomly buy a box. I grab a box. I don't know what number it is. I don't know who's inside it. I grab a box, take it home, eat it, get, open up my box. That whole process is using the random number generator. Whatever number I, the, the number generator picks, that corresponds to whoever's inside that box. Okay. I keep generating integers until all five labels have been found. So I need to get one, two, three, four, and five. I may get four ones, two twos, three threes, seven fours. And until I get that five, I have to keep going, okay? So I keep random number generating until I get all one through five. And I record the number of boxes it takes to get all five cards. So that is how many times I had to run the, the number generator, all right? So now two, the dot plot shows the number of serial boxes it took to get all five drivers in ca cars in 50 trials. So I did this process 50 times. Let's explain what the dot at 20 represents. That dot at 20 is a dot plot. It's one trial. Okay, so one trial took 20 boxes to get all five drivers. All right. 
that's what that 120 means. If it was like the one at 15, it would be one trial took 15 boxes. You got all five drivers, and that occurred three times because there's three dots on it. Okay. Now, see, use the results to simulate of the simulation to estimate the probability that it will take 23 or more boxes to get a full set of cards. Does this outcome provide convincing evidence that the five cards are not equally likely? So 23 is here. So the probability of getting 23 by random chance is zero, right? It never happened, right? This is a random process. It never happened in the 50 trials. So the probability of getting it taking 23 boxes or more to get a full set of cards is zero out of 50 or 0%. So there's about a 0% chance it would take 23 or more boxes to get a full set. Because this is so unlikely, right, we're using that 5% range to help us. Zero is less than 5%. Because it is so unlikely that it would take 23 or more boxes to get a full set, this result provides evidence, convincing evidence, that the five NASCAR driver cards are not equally likely to appear in the box zero. So if they were equally likely, then I should have got, this should have happened at least a couple times, right? At least more than 5% is what we'd expect. It happens never. So there has to be something to account for this. And what we're saying is, is that um, maybe these cards aren't equally in there. Mm -hmm. And that is all for 5.1 today. So here is our learning targets. And I'll see you back here for 5.2.